I know that uh, you were a Dungeons and Dragons player, or I assume you, you still are. And I assume some of that factors into your world building into Confessions of a Dorkly. But when you were playing Dungeons and Dragons, did you tend to go for the dark guys, uh, the, the darker characters and, and that as well? That's interesting. I, you know, I was a huge Dungeons and Dragons guy when I was a kid. I, I don't do it as much anymore. I don't know. You get married and have a kid. Maybe I haven't found the time. Although, you know, who doesn't have time in the pandemic? So I don't know if I'm being honest with myself. Um, I was a big fan. I was one of those guys who was, you know, I played, I was the dungeon master. I wrote my own adventures. I was like way in, I, I loved it. I've always loved the game. It's a great game. Um, and uh, it, it, is a, it is a huge influence on, on these books. These are, they're a little bit of like living in that Dungeons and Dragons world because it kind of takes on, kind of takes on a lot of the cliches and fantasy the way Dungeons and Dragons does, you know, it gives us all those worlds from token of orcs and dragons um, and lets you kind of play in them. So I'm kind of doing something similar, um, you know, Dork Lord spends a little bit more time on humor, um, it's a little bit more meta. Um, but you know, there's definitely, it's definitely something that like, I can feel my younger self who loved Dungeons and Dragons, you know, um, kind of loving being in this, this, this world. Um, as far as playing them though, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't think I was ever really given, maybe as a dungeon, you know, I guess as a dungeon master, essentially you are the guy that plays all the mon. I never thought of it this way, but you're the guy who plays all the monsters, right? Cause all the players are playing usually at least when I was a guy, you know, we were all the heroes, all the players. You were the elves and the rangers and the fighters and spellcasters and clerics. And But the, the dungeon master, he is the guy who has to play all the monsters. So I, I guess I was playing the monsters. I didn't think of it that way. But all right, maybe it started back then. I mean, who doesn't love a good monster? <laughs> That's hard. Why you read fantasy? You want to read about the dragon? Yeah, monsters don't show up. We don't have a story. That's going to be a... <laughs> not such an interesting book uh and then so how do you go about and and do your world building do you keep uh, a separate file with all of your information once you've declared something to be the rule of the land and you want to save that going forward into book two and presumably once the, those take off book three four five and six good question um you know I, I did a little bit more of that for um when i worked on my first fantasy novel for adults, Solaria. I did a little bit more of that where I was writing stuff about, you know, there was like, there was like four main kingdoms in that book. And so I was writing about a little bit of the history and it, it was so big that I actually did a little of that pre-writing first um, about each of the peoples. For Dork Lord, I didn't do that. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for it. One is that it, it is actually meant to embrace kind of all the literary cliches and kind of, kind of a, a fantasy and kind of turn them on their head. Um, so in a way I didn't want it to be completely unique. I wanted to play with the ideas that people were used to in fantasy and kind of like, you know, maybe question them, maybe make fun of them a little bit and have a little fun with them. And I think the other one was, I, um, I'm sometimes opposed to doing too much pre-writing like that. I, I actually like if the, if the world building comes out in small little pieces in your story so that it, that it does, especially in middle grade, I don't want to dump any information on the kids ever. Like if I'm doing world building, it has to rise out of the action. Um, and, and, and Dork Lord has a lot of world building. I think I almost probably put a little bit too much in it. Uh, the second book really slims that down. Um, you know, it's, it's middle grade. It's, you know, you want it to move fast and be exciting. Um, so I really, if there is world building, I do try to build it into the action and dialogue so that, you know, the kids don't know they're, finding out about the world as they do it. Um, in adult, you know, you've got a little bit more room, right? You can, uh, you can take a little time and, and adult readers like to read about the world a little bit more. So maybe I get a little more flexibility there. So do you keep, I mean, do, do, you, do you keep notes after you've worked it into the story and oh, save sure. it into a separate file so that you remember it forever later? Is it all just kind of up here? Well, see, I, I haven't because I feel like the the Bible is just the novel. Like that first novel is is the whatever is in there is the world. Because I'll do because to be honest, I rewrite so much that if I put something into the world, I, I might change it and change it again and change it three times. I'd almost have to write like a new Bible for the world after writing the book, which would be useful if I actually took the time to do it. But I feel like the, the novel is really the repository of all 
of all the information that I want for that world. If it's, and if it's not in the novel, I feel free to change it. Um, but I do go back to the novel, that being said. So maybe that's where the, and to see, because, you know, we forget our own stuff unless we're constantly reading it. So I will, I, like when I wrote the second Dork Lord and when I wrote the second Solari novel, I went back to the first and refreshed my mind as to every single detail, just so that I could make sure that um, I had the kind of consistency you expect in a novel. Um, How much of a uh, time off did you take between the two books? All, they, you know, I've written two in each series and they, they, they've they all just sort of, the mainly the ones for tour were mainly written before and the the ones for pain were mainly written after but there's 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 overlap um which i actually don't like i actually like to stop one for a while and then do the other one um just because the voice is so different it would typically take me weeks to um it's not something i could jump between in a day or something like the voice is so different between the middle grade and the adult fantasy that i literally just needed like time to get back into that mode of like telling jokes and kind of this spunky short sentences that we all use in middle grade uh, versus kind of the, the long drawn out complex compound sentences I use in, a, in an adult novel. Um, it's, it's, it's such a different way of writing. I do need, a, I did find it hard to go back and forth. I needed just a little time to like uh, settle into that style. 